This is the Everest Z5R calculator. It is very similar in design to the Facet in that it has a 10 key keyboard and a pinwheel mechanism inside. It has uh, an input register here and if you enter the numbers those appear in the input register and uh, above that is the main register, the output register with 13 digits and to the right is the counter. On the right hand side you have a crank and if you turn that for each turn the input gets added to the main register and the counter is incremented. So in this case I've turned the crank three times multiplying that input by three and the result is there. The three in the counter shows how many times you've uh, multiplied it, uh, how many times you've turned the crank. There are shift buttons here. I can shift the input to the left and this indicator now shows that we're on the tens digit of the counter and I can turn the crank to set that tens digit so I've now multiplied this input by 43 and the result is here. You can also turn the crank in the opposite direction to subtract. So this is 33 times that. And this also allows you to do shortcut multiplication. If I want to multiply the input by 933, instead of turning this uh, 9 times, oh, instead of turning this nine times I can move one further to the left and add one and then move back to the right and subtract one which is quicker than turning it nine times. There are clearing levers here this large one at the top is for the main register this smaller one is for the counter and this lever at the bottom is for the input. The counter automatically uh, chooses which direction to, to move in. So if I clear the counter and uh, turn it in the opposite direction, it will still increment. This selection button here shifts, in this case, to the minus side. Uh, if, if the first turn after clearing it is in the positive direction, in the clockwise direction, then this button shifts to the plus. Uh, either way, the first turn of the crank will cause the counter to increment, and after that it's set in that position. But you can select it yourself. When you clear the counter, it moves in the middle in a sort of neutral position until the first turn of the crank. You can do uh, division as well. Uh, this button here shifts the input all the way to the left so that you can enter a number uh, for division. You'll notice that the counter shows a 1 here in the leftmost position. That happened when I entered that first number for the division, the uh, numerator. But when I press this a second time to, uh, to start the division, this will be cleared. So the counter is all set up for the division. I think it only clears that first digit, not any of any any of the other digits in the counter. So, uh, yeah, you do have to be sure that, uh, yeah, that it is it is clear beforehand anyway, unless you specifically want to use uh, those further digits in the calculation. Anyway, so I've entered 355, and I want to divide that by 113. 
the usual uh, approximation to pi. So I simply start subtracting this button shifted to the left, to the minus, so that the counter is now uh, incrementing, it's counting subtractions. If I subtract it three times, this, is, uh, this becomes smaller than that. If I went too far, the bell rings, showing that I've uh, so showing that this is uh, over underflowed, that I've gone too far, then I can move back. So once you've uh, subtracted it as often as possible, you then uh, shift to the right and do that again. There we go. So the result of this division is 3.1415929. This machine also has back transfer. It's a two-step process. Uh, suppose you have some number in the main register that was the result of a calculation and you want to reuse that for a further calculation. You can copy that into the input register. To do that, you first need to make sure that the input register is shifted to the left uh, below that part of the register that you want to capture. Uh, whatever is in the, re in the input will be cleared as soon as you press this first button. Then you press the second button, the uh, back transfer button. That sets this up for the, uh, for the transfer, which happens when you pull the main register clearing lever. That, trans that clears the main register, transfers that number to the input, and then releases this mechanism. So now you can do uh, calculations with this number. And so on. If you accidentally activate the uh, back transfer mechanism and you don't want to do that, you can release it with this small button on the side, this slider. It also releases the second button if you've pressed that as well. So that's the back transfer. And that's pretty much all there is to this machine. It was made in Italy, in a town called uh, Crema, by uh, a company called Sirio. It was named after the river that flows uh, through the town. The company was set up in 1932 to make typewriters, and they used the brand name Everest for those typewriters. In about 1935 they uh, took over uh, another company that made adding machines and they started making those as well. But uh, during the war they designed this calculator. Uh, it had a fairly limited production during the war but after the war in around 1948 uh, production began in earnest. That was the uh, model Z1. Very similar to this yeah, and this is then the Z5R. There's also a Z5 that doesn't have the back transfer mechanism, but I think that has a has a small switch to automatically clear the input after an addition, so you can use that more easily for uh, uh, a lot of additions one after the other. 
This company was uh, eventually taken over by Olivetti. They, they stopped making adding machines in the mid-1960s and in the uh, late 60s they uh, were fully merged with Olivetti. They still made typewriters then. So that was the Everest Z5R. Thank you for watching.